Hi, everyone. So UK-based company ZipCharge has recently unveiled a portable EV charger at COP26. This is a power bank that works with any electric vehicle with a type 2 socket using a standard type 2 cable. Today, we are speaking with the co-founder of ZipCharge, Jonathan Carrier. Welcome, Jonathan. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you, and thank you for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure to speak to you and your viewers and listeners. Thank you so much. So uh, briefly, can you please share what are the use cases for ZipCharge Go? Sure. Um, we conceived it for um, the people who can't access home charging. So around the world, there are millions of people that uh, live in uh, flats, uh, apartments or other types of housing where they don't have off street parking. Um, and that really restricts them from being able to install a home charger. Um, home charging is the greatest, one of the greatest conveniences of owning an electric vehicle. It means you never have to drive to a petrol or gas station ever again. It's also a way that you can get the cheapest form of electricity because it's a lot cheaper to charge at home than it is to go to a public charging network. So we conceived it primarily so that um, people who are disadvantaged by their living circumstances can have access to flexible charging at home. But the ZipCharge Go has many other uses. Um, it's also a flexible charger that you can take anywhere with you. So if you go to work, you could take it with you and charge whilst you're at work. Um, you can take it with you on holiday. You know, there's, there's many use cases from a personal point of view where you can have access to charging no matter where you park. And that's really the key. The key about the Go is it turns any parking space into a charging spot. And then I guess there, there are many other use cases. It can be used in remote applications. So it could be used uh, in uh, rural environments, particularly if you have no power, not just for charging an electric vehicle, because it has a regular domestic socket also built into the unit, it can power anything. It could power a scooter, it could power a rickshaw, it could power your home, it could power power tools, it could provide energy to anything. Um, and then it's also probably worth saying that, you know, there's a lot of interest from breakdown and recovery services, where this could be a device that could be used um, and provide to people who run out of charge. Um, and we, we see that as a kind of a secondary benefit. The core is about being able to allow people to charge at home. Right. The video that you have released, it shows primarily a car with a type two socket being charged. But are you saying that it can be used to charge three wheelers, two wheelers, etc. as well? Yes, it depends on those two or three wheelers, how they would normally be charged. Okay. If they're just plugged into a regular socket, right. then this device could be used to power uh, a two or a three wheeler. So it really will power anything. Okay. So uh, can you talk about the product specifications? What is the capacity and how quickly can it charge an electric car? Sure. So the unit that we've shown is a four kilowatt hour uh, unit. Um, that's a true usable capacity. Okay. So the actual installed capacity is slightly larger. So you get a true four kilowatt hours from that. Depending on the vehicle, that's enough to deliver around 20 miles of range. Now, in most countries, excluding the US, um, that's enough for the average daily commute, which tends to be less than that. Um, that's why we're also producing larger version, an eight kilowatt hour unit, so double the capacity. Um, that's oriented primarily to the US market where they travel further distances, but even still the average commute in uh, the US is only 25 miles uh, return, return journey. So the, four, the eight kilowatt hour uh, unit will give approximately 40 miles of range. Okay. So the, the unit we showed, the four kilowatt hour uh, unit, that weighs 25 kilos um, and will deliver a charge to the vehicle. So full discharge of the four kilowatt hours in just over half an hour. And it takes one hour to charge up from a 230 volt, 240 volt socket, depends on the on the local uh, grid supply uh, that you have to to your property. The larger unit is double that, so it takes uh, just over two hours to charge up and then just over one hour to discharge eight kilowatt hours uh, to the vehicle. Uh, it's very efficient. There's very little loss in terms of the transition and movement of that energy from the charger to the vehicle. And in fact, the size of it is smaller 
than the typical bag you can take on an aircraft. And what is the weight of the larger unit, the eight kilowatt hour unit? Yeah, so that will be around 45 kilograms. Um, so obviously that's significantly heavier. Um, and that's because of, you know, the batteries that are in there. But what's important to say is that battery technology is improving all the time. Um, and we've had to create the units and the technology to with the technology that exists today. We understand the roadmap of how batteries are developing. They're getting more efficient in terms of the amount of energy that they can store. So the energy density. So we have a clear roadmap over the next coming years as technology improves in terms of batteries we will increase the capacity and or we can keep the capacity the same and reduce the weight the unit will weigh from 25 kgs to 45 kgs so yes. one would be lugging around an extra weight that will somewhat reduce the range of the vehicle so have you done any analysis around the net gain of carrying it on self yeah so the the impact is very very marginal um, the 25 kilograms is equivalent to like a 10, 11, 12 year old child. And I don't think that anybody would drive, uh, you know, anything around with them and expect that it would have an impact, um, you know, particularly if it's your family. Um, so if you think about it, most electric vehicles are quite heavy because of their batteries. Even if you take something like a Nissan Leaf, you know, it's 1600 kilograms, you know, 1700 kilograms. So 25 kilograms is less than 2%. It's about one and a half percent of the weight of the vehicle. And it has therefore a negligible impact on the range deterioration of the vehicle, you know, and actually, I would say the other way, because you don't have to drive to a charging point, where you lose range, because you have to drive around to find one, the net impact is actually even more positive, because it's not just the range you gain from the unit, it's the range you save from having to drive to a charge point and save it. And that more than offsets the yeah. marginal impact that uh, carrying the 25 kilos has on the vehicle in its range. Right. Makes sense. And it makes sense for electric cars that are actually really heavy. But I'm speaking from an Indian context where two wheelers and three wheeler fleets specifically for last mile delivery and e-commerce deliveries are the quickest to adopt electric vehicles. And in th sure. that case, the weight might play a part. Yes, and that's if somebody wants to use it, you know, by taking it with them. Um, the device is easy enough to be able to be stored inside your home. And in fact, if you put it in the context of the primary use case of how we developed it, it would be for people to leave at home, charge it during the day, they yes. can come home from work and then they just wheel it out to their vehicle and plug in and then take it back in again without ever the need to take it with them. So it depends on how people want to use it and it depends on their journey and the radius of the journey that they have. It's not something that you have to take with you, but because it is light enough and compact enough, it's something that you can use and therefore take advantage of its flexibility and portability. Right. And it is, I, I have to say, the design is compact, very nice, and it's uh, easy to carry given the handle and the wheels. So what kind of security mechanism are you planning to put in place to ensure it's not stolen easily? Yes, of course. So just like any charger, you know, when you connect the cable, they're locked into the vehicle and it will be locked into the charger. But of course, someone can still come along and cut the cable if they want. Um, but there's a number of features that we're putting in place in order to protect the security of the unit. The first is it's connected to an app. Um, only the user who has authenticated that they are the owner of that charger, which it's married to, will be able to authenticate the charge. So without it, it's a 25 kilogram dead weight. So even if someone were to steal it, you can't actually access it in order to start charging. That's the first thing. The second thing is the um, charger has an alarm. So it has a motion sensor. So if it were to be moved, you know, the alarm would go off and that's an automotive, like you, an alarm you have in a car, so quite loud, um, but also it can be geofenced. So it won't go off in a you know certain radius of where you typically park, but if it gets moved outside of that area, the alarm will go off, but you'll also get notification on your mobile device that says the item has been moved or the alarm is going off and so forth. The other thing we're doing then is it's because it's got a GPS uh, in embedded, it can be tracked. So even if it were to be stolen, it can be tracked and, and, and shown on a live tracking, you know, inside your device to show you where it is, if it's on the move and ultimately where it ends up. Um, and then ultimately, once it's been, uh, if it gets stolen, 
you can disable it. So just like you have with a mobile phone today, just if you have an Apple or an equivalent, you know, you can disable the phone and it becomes redundant. And then finally, um, we will be structurally welding the cells inside the unit. So even if someone were to steal it and were to break into it, the mm -hmm. cells are useless because you couldn't reuse them for something else. The final one that I didn't mention is the side handle can be used as a tether. So if you wanted to connect it to some okay. fixed object, that could be the tow bar on the vehicle, it could be a post, there could be a number of things, or even the wheel of the car, uh, depending on how you want to tether it, you can tether to that. And that's a reinforced handle that will provide some security, you know, but all of those security measures that we put in place basically means it's useless to anybody other than the person who has it. Right, understood. And what about weather protection? Can you talk about the IP rating? Can it work in harsh weather conditions if left open? Yes, it's designed to be used in any weather conditions. So it will be IP54 rated, which is exactly the same as the charge points that exist on the street in public today, um, which means it's weatherproof. It can be used in snow. Uh, it can be used in hot weather. So we recognize clearly that uh, the, you know, the, the weather and the temperature extremes that uh, exist in India. So this is rated to work from minus 10 to plus 50. Uh, and therefore that will cover the majority of, uh, you know, the use cases. So when is the launch? I mean, the market launch of the product? Yeah, so I can't commit to when we'll be able to launch and deliver in India because we'll have a, you know, staggered rollout around the world of the units. Um, as a UK company, obviously we'll focus on the UK and Europe first, um, mm -hmm. and then we will prioritize the market where the demand is highest. That will likely lead us to certain markets such as the US and or certain parts of Asia. But we also recognize that with all of the government announcements and, as you say, the transition to electrification in India, it's a big push of the Indian government. And therefore, you, we will look to be able to support the Indian market with uh, a, ro a timely rollout that can therefore meet the demand uh, of the market. Right. But in the US and the UK market, when is the market launch scheduled? So the, in the UK, we will launch at the end of next year so and probably deliver the first units at the start of 2023. Uh, and then we would hope that other markets will follow within the next six months to 12 months afterwards. Have you already raised seed fund or is it a bootstrapped company? Can you talk about that? Yeah. So we're bootstrapped. Myself and my co-founder, Richie, and I have put a significant amount of our own money into this to get it where it is today. Uh, we are raising money at the moment. So we've reached out to a number of investors and, you know, we have our usual pitch deck available uh, to raise our seed round. That will give us approximately 15 months of runway to get to the final engineering. So the ready for production of the unit. Uh, at which point then we'll need to raise again because we'll also need working capital to support, you know, the, the supply chain and the components and shipping the units and so forth. Okay, understood. So what kind of ownership models uh, have you planned, if any, and uh, if one was to buy it off the shelf, uh, what is it going to cost? Yeah, so our ambition is for the unit to cost the same as a fully installed fixed home charge point. Now that varies around the world and it varies significantly based on a, a number of factors. How far the charge point is away from your consumer unit where the electricity comes into your house. What type of supply exists in your property? You know, there's a whole number of factors, um, but typically that's a figure in the approximately around 1500 pounds, you know, here in the UK, in the US, it can be a lot more. It can be up to five or 6,000 pounds because they run on a 110 volt, you know, domestic circuit as opposed to the 230, 240 that exists uh, in Europe that's more common uh, that's here. Um, in terms of ownership models, we will follow a hardware as a service business model. Um, we will offer people the opportunity to buy it, buy it outright if they want, but we also see a huge opportunity to be able to offer this as a subscription um, where you buy, you know, your unit, you effectively lease the unit, you pay a small upfront fee, and then you, you have it on a rolling contract, just like you do with a mobile phone. And we think when you do it that way, it becomes a far more accessible proposition that provides flexibility and also avoids the significant upfront cost that uh, many people face when installing a fixed home charger. Okay. So thank you, Jonathan, for sharing all the details and You're taking welcome. time for this. We wish you all the best for the launch and we look forward to more updates soon. 
very good and we hope that everyone in the indian market that watches this you know follows us zipcharge.global is our website uh, you can follow us on social media and uh, of course we're happy to hear from um, any potential partners collaborators in the indian market so thank you